The UNESCO classified Lilau Square was and continues to be a meeting place of cultures. Home to a shaded well and square and surrounded by residences of various backgrounds, housing influential local Macanese families to Western businessmen and diplomats, it is even imbued with its own legend. Though only earning its name in the 20th century, its place in the history books goes back to the first decades of the 19th century. The name of this square represents the two cultures because the Portuguese name is Fonte do Lilau, means the Lilau water source, but in Chinese is the Old Lady Well, Apojang. These were already the outskirts of the city. Uh, this was the, the main street, and the fountain was the main element where people can well, have to wait here to bring water home. The water came from the Peña Hill. Uh, in Chinese was the San Po Su, the place of the three trees, and the three trees still, still here. The fountain was the place that unified um, the people who come here, that we have British, Portuguese and Chinese mainly. So we have here an interesting building. The yellow building here is from 1937. This is an Art Deco building that is not only the Art Deco value, he also have the, what is called the hygiene policies that were influenced from the green city, cities from Ebesner Howard, the man who started the green cities uh, philosophy. Then in front of us we have the white buildings. These buildings appear in photos of the 1870s, so they are m more than 150 years old and these buildings could be in any Portuguese village, Mediterranean village. So small houses, uh, white plaster uh, for small families. Then behind you still have a big mansion and this was the mansions of the big families and we are the mansions that were rented to the British, to the American, to the different companies before the foundation of Hong Kong. And this house in the corner, the greenhouse, is a Chinese house. And inside still with the, the layout that exists 100 years ago. And I finish with a legend that say the ones who drink for Lilao will remember or will come to Macau. Just a short walk away lies another one of Macau's historical treasures, the Moorish Barracks. Constructed after the arrival of new governor of Macau, Visconde de saint Januario, who brought a unit of soldiers with him from India, the barracks oversaw the sea and demonstrated an interlinking of the Portuguese-speaking countries still present today. One year after this was built, and that unit of Indian soldiers come to this, that become known as the Maurice Barracks. So this position was critical to observe the harbor. And then it also was good to control the Chinese floating population that was in the inner harbor, as well the, the city, the Chinatown in front of us. So the building was in a very strategical position with very strategical troops that were neither Portuguese, neither Chinese, so that could intervene rapidly in any problem they face here. Uh, the Portuguese also are pioneers uh, in organizing this kind of uh, troops, foreign troops, like Muslim, Chinese, and later become African troops to Macau. And the British somehow copied this kind of formula to have uh, indigenous uh, unities for police and also administration. This was for a battalion, almost 200 men, and later in 
1905, he became a maritime police unit, and then the authority over the port, because the port was just in front of us. You can have control the entrance of the port, and now is the water and maritime authority. And in 2005, he was classified or included in the World Heritage List.